Points per 60 is probably one of the most objectively telling stats when it comes to offensive ability in the NHL. It's the easiest way to measure how effective a player is at generating offense by normalizing for each player's time on ice. And unsurprisingly, the list of players at the top of this stat over the past two years are probably who you would expect to be there. And even more unsurprising is that Connor McDavid is the runaway leader when it comes to this stat, putting up a ridiculous 4.9 points per 60 minutes of ice time. The rest of the list is comprised of the cream of the crop of today's NHL. Guys like Nikita Kucherov, Nathan McKinnon, David Pasternak, Leon Dreisaitl, Elias Pettersson, Austin Matthews, Sidney Crosby, and Kirill Kaprizov. And that's just to name a few. The rest of this list is just as star-studded. Well, except for one player, who a lot of casual fans probably haven't even heard of, and that's Daniel Sprong. Sprong ranks 17th amongst all players in the NHL over the past two seasons when it comes to points per 60, putting up a ridiculous 3.4 points per 60 minutes of ice time. That makes him a more efficient offensive player than guys like Sidney Crosby, Braden Point, Kirill Kaprizov, Alexander Barkov, Mika Zibinijad, and Jack Eichel, to name a few. And that's what makes Sprong so interesting to me. Despite being more efficient offensively than some of the best players in the league, he's consistently used very sparingly, both in Seattle last year and with Detroit so far this year. In Seattle last season, for example, Sprong ranked 11th amongst forwards for average time on ice. And if you're a hockey fan, you know that there's typically only 12 forwards that play every game. So he typically played the second fewest minutes across all forwards on most nights. But his offensive impact during the minutes he did play was the highest across the entire roster, averaging 3.7 points per 60 minutes, which is significantly higher than any other forward. And the same is true for his stint in Detroit so far this year. Sprong once again ranks 11th amongst Red Wing forwards for average time on ice. But his offensive impact is second only to the resurging Patrick Kane. So what's going on? Why does Sprong seem to consistently play a bottom six role on teams that he plays on while being one of the most efficient offensive players in the entire league? Let's talk about the good first. There's not a lot of players in the NHL that offer what Sprong does. The combination of his elite shot, excellent skating abilities, and above average playmaking and vision is what helps him create offense as efficiently as he does. His shot in particular is amongst the best in the entire league. According to Money Puck's expected goal model, Sprong ranks 11th in the entire league when it comes to his shooting talent above average. This stat tries to quantify a player's ability to score more goals than an average player given the same scoring opportunities. And if you watch this guy play, the lethality of his shot is pretty obvious. Schultz swings it. Sprong scores! Wenberg darts. One-timer, bang! Sprung is sprung on the weak side. 450. Shizkiki, a chance. Sprung scores. Daniel Sprung on the down and out. More emotionally. There's a shot on net. He scores. Daniel Sprung. Sprung over the line. He'll dust it off. 2 1. He scores. Pick up the phone. It's answer time. Sprung escaped the check, played it to Fisher, oh. back for Sprung, scores! What a play. What a play by Fisher to start with and then Sprung. When you see some of those highlights, it's tough to understand how he hasn't been able to consistently play top six or even middle six minutes on any of his teams in the past. His offensive skill set is so attractive. To be fair, he does get some opportunities to step into a bigger role when there's injuries. For example, when Patrick Kane was out due to injury earlier this year, Sprong was given the opportunity to play in a top six role with Alex Debrinkit in JT Comfer. And he also does get to play on the power play as well, but he's seemingly never given a chance to play in a bigger role on an extended basis. Look at this timeline of Sprong's time on ice per game since last season. The blue line represents his time with the Kraken, and the red line represents his time so far with the Red Wings. His ice time varies considerably from game to game fluctuating anywhere from 10 minutes a night to 15 minutes a night. And this really just appears to be a byproduct of any injuries amongst the top nine forwards, or if his team is in dire need of offense. Because the biggest hole in Sprong's game is his lack of defensive intensity and inability to make defensive reads on a consistent basis. Like on this play against the Stars, where Sprong was given an opportunity to play in a top six role with Debrinkit and Comfer while Patrick Kane was injured. 
The play starts with a rebound off a point shot which pops loose to Sprong's wing. This was a bouncing puck, and by all means could have resulted in a change in possession if Sprong was able to use his body to engage Lindell along the boards. But he instead haphazardly swipes at the puck and fails to make the defensive play, resulting in the puck staying deep in the Red Wings zone. A few seconds later he gets another chance to make a play on the puck, but he yet again makes the wrong decision by trying to reverse the puck instead of making the safer play along the boards. This again results in the Stars maintaining possession and keeping the wings hemmed in. The Stars then freely whip the puck around against an exhausted wings team, eventually resulting in a high danger opportunity for Wyatt Johnston in the slot. The puck once again pops loose to a wide open Essa Lindell, who makes no mistake and buries this puck in the back of the net. If you watch Sprong closely on this play, he once again drifts off away from his check until he realizes how open Lindell is but it's too little too late by the time he realizes. And then again on this play against the Colorado Avalanche, after a breakdown in the defensive zone for the wings, the puck pops loose to Sprong along the boards with essentially zero pressure on him. But instead of making the safe play, Sprong tries to make a quick move and ends up losing the handle on the puck and turns it over in the neutral zone instead. And to make things worse, his intensity after turning the puck over doesn't inspire any confidence either. He casually tries to kick at the pass instead of taking the body, or using his stick, or skating back to get into a defensive position. And just seconds later, Nathan McKinnon would do Nathan McKinnon things to draw first blood. Chances. Here's Rantanen. Back in for McKinnon! And he scores! And then finally against the Oilers? Sprong gets caught after a sloppy line change against probably the best five-man unit in the entire NHL in McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, Hyman, Ekholm, and Bouchard. Sprong yet again gets caught puck watching and fails to see that Bouchard has skated into the wide open slot. And this is very much why Sprong hasn't seen his role grow significantly while with the Kraken or with the wings. For that to happen, the coach has to be able to trust his defensive ability against the top lines of the opposing team. These types of defensive zone issues can be somewhat masked when he's matched up against the opposing team's fourth line, who have limited offensive abilities in comparison to the top six or if he's on the power play. And that basically sums up exactly how he's been utilized throughout the last two seasons by two different coaches, as an offensive-minded fourth liner with some power play time due to his elite offensive skills. And to be honest, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's a valuable player for any team to have, considering his offensive skill set is likely of someone who would garner a much higher salary if he wasn't so ineffective in the defensive zone. He basically gives you an elite offensive option at a fraction of the cost of one, but you have to deploy him in a manner to maximize his strengths and to minimize his weaknesses. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Thanks for watching.